Blessed viewers, we welcome you again on RTV. We thank God for blessing us together. This is Lesero Daniel. We are here for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. No any other vision, but only one, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Believing that if we have such, we're able to see and hear from the presence of God. And I declare for all of us, raised up together with Christ, seated with him on the right hand of the Father, blessed above all, seeing and hearing from the presence of the Father. That will cause us to be always in the will of God. And I'm saying to all of us, let's go in, let's remain in, only seeing and hearing from his presence. The reward will be in the open. When the reward is in the open, in the open are the results of what came from within. It will show that you have been with Christ. It will show that you have been with Christ. This is the reference of the gate beautiful. When Peter and John healed the man at the gate beautiful, the message that came after made everyone looking at them to say, look at these people. They are unschooled. They've never been to school. But the way they speak, it shows that they have been with Christ. The reward is in the open. In the open, they see who you have been. Yet you have been with him from the secret place. God is with you. God is with you. We thank you all for watching. We thank you all for tuning in. We thank you all for keeping on praying for us. Your prayers are valuable. We value your prayers. Like Colossians 4, the Apostle Paul says, pray for me so that God can open a door into the mystery. So I'm saying if I've eaten a page or a book, if it's a page, to go to the next verse, I need your prayer. If it's a book, to go to the next prayer, to the next page, I need your prayer. So when he opens it, as you pray, God opens a door into the mystery. So when I speak the mysteries, you are part of those mysteries. We are a team. You prayed, I had to release it. God is with you. God is with you. So we thank you all over the world. We thank you for tuning in. We thank God for your presence. We thank God for you to tune in with us. All the Zoomers, I welcome you. Welcome you. God loves you. We thank you for tuning in. We thank you. Together with everyone all over the world, we will receive the same. God is with you. I thank you all for your participation. Thank you for all for your fellowship. Your fellowship is valuable. I believe in fellowship. That when we meet together, as we part, someone carried something from someone. As long as we carry what is of value, as long as we carry what is of value, when we meet, when we part, what is of value is not selfish. It's there to be shared. So the purpose of fellowship will be to share will be to share. That's why John 1 says, out of his fullness, we all have a share. Out of his fullness, we all have a share. So, through this fellowship, it will be Mary and Elizabeth meeting together. John the Baptist in your stomach will benefit. Your pregnancy will benefit. There will be the leaping of joy. God loves you all. So, I'm saying thank you all the disciples. You, you preached a wonderful message. Thank you so much. Um, you're causing us to pray, encouraging us, giving us, you know, throughout the day, there are many people who watch TV 24 hours. So you're touching every life. You're touching every life. So thank you so much for your message. Thank you for your prayers. May the good Lord bless you. May he increase you all the more. God loves you. Amen. Blessed viewer, we are going on with the message of immortality. And I've seen everybody talking to me. They've been commending about immortality. And I believe everything that was lost, you receive it tonight. 
And some would say, pray for me for such to happen. And I believe tonight we'll just touch a bit of how to get it. How to get it. You see, some things, we can spend time in the prayer rooms praying for what we cannot get. Praying for what we cannot receive. You see, John 20, from verse 15, remember Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Three times Peter cried. And when he cried, I want us to get this. Just after he cried, Jesus begins to say now, when you are young, you dress yourself and you go wherever you want to go. But when you're old, someone takes you by the hand. He dresses you. He takes you by the hand. He takes you where you did not want to go. We're talking about immortality. But that part comes when Jesus is doing it. Immortality comes because of you. Not when Jesus is doing it. Because if you dress yourself and go wherever you go, that's where we need to get the message then about immortality. Because Jesus, after saying when you are young, you dress yourself, you go wherever you go. Then he says when you are old, someone dresses you, takes you by the hand, and takes you where you do not want to go. After that he says, he said that to indicate the kind of death the kind of death that Peter would die. The kind of death. So let we are talking about immortality before the death. Before that kind of death. We need to understand this. Before that kind. We talk about before Jesus went to the cross. How people tried to punch him and they couldn't punch him. How people tried to grab him, they couldn't. He would just go through them. The kind of ministering you'll be doing, not something that is temporary. Not something that is temporary, but something that remains. So I'm saying to all of you, tonight, I'm just going to touch a bit of that. And after touching a bit of it, I believe everybody will understand. And we'll go on on Friday. God loves you. I thank you so much. May the good of bless you. I believe in what God has placed in your life. I believe in that. You remember the time to be born, a time to die, a time to love, a time to hate. That's not immortality. And many preached about it. Many preached about it. And it's not immortality. And it's not a portion for you. It's not, it's never your portion. It's never your portion. It's never your portion. Tell your neighbor it's never your portion. It's never your portion. And sometimes when people are offended, it means they did wrong. If you feel offended, it means you did wrong. But if you are confident, you have entered into the throne of grace. I love Jesus. I love Jesus Christ. I love our master. He is a wonderful master. Full of grace and truth. Full of love. Full of compassion. Okay, let's go to our Bibles. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3. I'm going to read from there. I'll jump there and there. It's, it's a well-known scripture, but now we must be careful on what we deliver when we preach to people. Okay, I'll start from verse 1. To everything that is a season. To everything, just start from there. To everything there's a season and a time for every matter or purpose 
under the sun, not beyond. So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, we have been raised up together with Christ and we are seated with him on the right hand of God. We are blessed above all. We are not under the sun. So under the sun there's everything. So what is going to mention here is under the sun. So and under the sun we only find mortality. I repeat, just, just first verse, just the first verse only. Before we go time for this, time for that, just the first verse. To everything there's a season and a time for every matter of purpose under the sun or under the heaven. So if we have been raised up together with Christ, we went through it. It says, he went through the heavens, Hebrews 4. He went through the heavens, Hebrews 11. He went through the heavens and he became the firstborn among many brethren. So he's the firstborn amongst all of us. So if he went through the heavens, we have been raised up. We have been, so we don't operate under the heavens. So, so that's why I'm saying I know a lot of people preach this message, but it's not for you who have been raised. It's never for you. Okay, everything that works under the sun. Let me give you one example. Okay, listen to an example. There is a season. To everything there is a season. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, if you get it, you'll understand. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, it says it was not season for figs to come out of the tree. He cursed it because the fig tree was operating under where there's a season for everything. Revelations 22, there are trees on every side. The they bear fruits winter or summer, weekly, monthly, yearly. They bear, they bear fruits. So we begin to understand immortality operating here because you're not operating under the heavens you're operating while you are and that's why Nicodemus came in John chapter 3 he says Rabbi teacher this is a teacher of the law meeting with the teacher of grace teacher of the spirit now he comes to Jesus he says teacher it shows that you are from heaven, for no one can do the things that you do. So it teacher, in other words, teacher, you don't work according to seasons. Teacher, you don't operate from under the heaven. Teacher, you are from above. Immortality. So, so, so that's why I'm saying Ecclesiastes 3, that's why I'm saying we don't have to teach it the way time for this time. No, where are you operating? I repeat so that you can get it. And to show that if, if, if this is an operation, if this is an operation from above, if there's offense given to anybody, if there's offense, if there's offense, the rock operates from above. Listen. Just, just this. To everything. Uh, let me put the Bible aside so that you to everything. Why do you have to operate like a thing? Why do you have to operate like a thing? Creation has been waiting for sons of glory. Those are immortal. Okay. Okay. God is not a man. He's not even a thing. Numbers 23. Numbers 23, Numbers 23 from verse 19 to 20. God is not a man, not even a thing. 
So the fig tree was cursed because it operated under the heavens because the season to bear fruit. So Jesus cursed it. So can anything that is immortal experience a curse? Can anything that is immortal? So I want to help you with deliverance from curses. I want to help with deliverance. I, no, I'm giving you a deliverance that will keep you. Not a deliverance that is temporary. Now, that's why I'm talking about gifts that are immortal. Not that are mortal. Gifts that are immortal. Listen, you cannot come to someone who is immortal and tell him, Are we all prophets? Are you prophets? Are all prophets? Are all evangelists? Do you all hear the sin? Do you all cast out demons? No, you can't. You can't tell the immortal and say, be eager for greater gifts. Because when you come to the immortal, the immortal will speak in tongues of men and of angels. No, he does not come there. And an immortal person speaks in tongues which cannot be stilled. An immortal man gives knowledge which will not pass away. An immortal man speaks prophecies that will not cease. Prophecies from an immortal person, tongues from an immortal person, healings, knowledge, they do not experience a season. They will never experience because they are not a thing. They don't fall under a thing. So they come to Jesus. Matthew 7. We heal the sick in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We prophesied in your name. He said, I never knew you, you evil doers. So if you have been raised up together with Christ, you are seated with him. You are known by God. You are known. You are known by God. The Lord knows who are his. The Lord knows who are his. I love Jesus. Now listen to this. I just had to explain the very first sentence so that we can all get it. I believe we got the first sentence now. To everything. There is a season and a time for every matter Come on, you're going to be out of matters. So, if you are out of time and out of space, you don't operate according to the time under the earth, under the heavens. To everything, there is a season and a time for every matter of purpose under heaven. It doesn't say about the... No, no. What, there, there are things under. Now, Colossians 3. Set your mind on things that are from above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that... So if you set your mind on things that are from above where Christ is seated on the right hand how are you going to operate? According to what is from above. Not under... Immortality. 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 Do we get this? That's why I'm saying let, let's connect them. God cannot contradict himself. He cannot say a time for this, a time for that. After that, he says this. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. God is not under the heavens. Just with the first sentence. And what are those things that are. You know, experience in seasons and time for every matter or purpose. You see, that's why when you show immortality, that's why I would make an example of eating a poisonous flower. Why do I make that example? Why do I make that example? There's a purpose. That's purpose. But it's not for the purpose that I did. Mm. 
So if meaning if it's not according to the purpose, it will kill you. Because under the heavens, there's order of things according to seasons. So this science shall follow them that believe, not according to seasons. Not according to the order. So many people who fight miracle signs and wonders, they fight because they know order from under the heavens. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Okay, we understand the. So if you understand the very first sentence, no one must, can preach to you about from this, this two and go. No one, no, no one. When it comes to there, when it goes to chapter two, when it starts from there, it says, verse one. Listen, you will understand Enoch. I'm still saying I'll remind you about Enoch. Why he experienced such things? Why didn't he taste death? Listen. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. So, but when it comes to God, you can't pluck out what bears fruit every season. You can't pluck out what. So, when you come during the season when it didn't produce, it will be cursed. <laughs> it will be cursed. It will be. We all know all this. We all know. A time to get. I'm t- verse six now. A time to get, and a time to lose. Do you lose anything? Because to us, even when you die, it's gain. It's gain. When they insult you. It's a momentary thing that causes to produce an eternal weight. You gain. You gain. A time to keep and a time to cast away. What do you throw away? You see, if you eat everything, what do you throw <laughs> Listen, verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. So it means you have time for Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 up to verse 21 and a time for verse 22 up to the end. Meaning the fruit of sinful nature and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. A time to love and a time to hate. What kind of Holy Spirit will permit that? A time to love and a time to hate. Hatred we find it from before verse 21, Galatians 5. From verse 22, what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Love, patience, kindness, perseverance, self-control. Against such things, there's no law. So there's some kind of a law that operates under the sun. Listen to this. There's some kind of law that operates from under the sun or under the heaven. So somebody will preach about that law and say to people, there's time for that. No, there's time. You are introducing people of God. Time to be cursed and a time to live for a while. Immortality has no season. Immortality against such, there's no law. You see, if you're in the spirit, sometimes you forget to say hallelujah, you go, Ula, oops, because you are dancing like David. Not from under the sun. What kind of a language? What kind of a language? If you hear my sound, it doesn't say 
word. But to him that sound, it's word. To him, it's I want to help you because he said to David when you hear the sound it doesn't say when you hear my word when you hear the sound it's a language know that I've gone forth before you he says now I want to show you immortality a man who's born again Jesus cannot play a lower level. He says a man who's born again, he's like the wind. Though you may hear its sound, but do you know where it comes from? Do you know where it's going? Do you know where it's coming from? Do you know where it is going? Do you get this? He said in John 3, a man who is born again is like the wind. No one knows where he comes from. No one knows where he is going. Hence, a sound will just come. Mm. 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 It will put you into a trance. It will put you into the... It, it's a language communicated from above. Listen to this. Listen to this. I love Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. You see, a time to love, a time to eat. Galatians chapter 5 cannot contradict itself. The fruit of sinful nature. So you cannot combine these together. You cannot come, you cannot preach about this. And many will call it a revelation. Now, listen to this part. I love Jesus Christ. Listen to this part. I have, from verse 10, I have seen, I have seen the painful labor and exertion and miserable business which God has given to the sons of men. Are you a son of men? Are you a son of men? Listen, I repeat. I've seen the painful labor and exertion and, mis and miserable business which God has given to the sons of men with which to exercise and busy themselves. And busy themselves. Now you'll get it. If you busy yourself, it's your will. It's not the will of God. If you busy yourself, it's your will. But if God, if you're led by the Spirit, you're, you cannot busy yourself when you're led by the Spirit. You cannot busy yourself when you're led by the Spirit. So you busy yourself the season and time for everything under the sun because you are busy yourself. Listen to this. I, I, I'm saying to you it's time to end that timeless space. Where you will understand, where you will know mysteries of the kingdom without questioning them. Yes. 
without questioning them. No, 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 we need to get this. We need to understand this. You can be in trouble if you preach this message. Because many invested in those messages, tithed for it, gave for those messages. And yet, to the Lord, it was a yes that later meant no. It was a yes to them later. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says, our message with Timothy and Silas has never been a yes that might mean no later. It was always a yes to God. Our message with Timothy and Silas has always been a yes. So, are you going to preach mortal message? Or any mortal? So, when there's knowledge, it passes away because it was mortal. It had its season. That's where a curse can always come. Because a fig tree had a season. It was cursed. Now listen to this. I love Jesus. Now listen to this part. You can be in trouble to preach this message. But I love the trouble that comes because of such a message. I love the trouble that comes because of this message. Because someone told it, a time to be born, a time be ready, ready for a curse. Because that a message that brings reliance on seasons. Baba, I need a prayer. I'm going through a season. Come out of your mortal condition. Come into the immortal. Listen now. Listen, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has made everything beautiful in its time. We carry the glory that does not fade. Look, don't carry the, the glory that Moses had, that they had to put a veil on his face so that he can pass away. Second Corinthians chapter 3. It says that the glory that we have is the glory shining from Jesus' face. It's the glory that does not fade. Chapter 4. It's the glory that comes from his face. Second Corinthians 3 and Second Corinthians 4. It's the glory that remains. So we are ministers of the new covenant, not of the old. So don't proclaim yourself a minister of the old covenant through your message. Listen now. Listen now. I believe it's, it's, it's too much. If somebody is dying because of it's a bullet, let's make them half dead to cause them to come back. Yes, the Apostle Paul does it. He practices it. Some of the things you will think I'm just quoting them. The Apostle Paul practices with Bar Jesus in Acts chapter 13. Bar Jesus criticizes him. He fights him in front of everybody. Jesus, I mean, uh, the Apostle Paul look at Bar Jesus. says, you son of the devil. You are going to be blind for a while. So he puts him into his atmosphere for a while, not permanently. You're going to be blind for a while. And everybody believed they were shocked. Because what he said does not happen from under the heavens. Yet taking the very person who is under the heavens to experience his season of seeing and not seeing. Taking him there to ex make him experience that season. Seeing and not seeing. Listen now. I love Jesus. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also has planted eternity in man's heart. So this is what you have to go. He planted eternity in man's heart. So believe in that. He plants the word. He says, it is not what you eat that makes you dirty. It is what comes from your heart. So the good that comes from your heart shall keep you. He also planted eternity 
in men's hearts and minds a divinely implanted sense of purpose working through the ages through the not at a certain season working through the ages which nothing which nothing listen listen i love jesus because many preach this but they could not go on up to here Meaning they flew and could not land, but they crashed. Listen to this. I love Jesus. Listen to this. I repeat this part. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also has planted eternity in men's hearts and minds. A divinely implanted sense of peoples working through the ages, working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Yet, ay, 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 listen. Yet, I love Jesus. Yet, so that men cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. So if you cannot, you live by one thing. Lord, I don't know. You know. So that he can be God at all times. So Ezekiel didn't say I'm a prophet. I can do everything in this village. God says, do you think that these bones can live? It comes to this scripture. Eternity in your heart. Lord, I don't know. You know. I don't know. You know. That's why Moses had to ask it. Show me your glory. Hey. There's a place near me where you may stand on the rock. And when he comes to that rock, he went into the cleft of the rock. When he went to the cleft of the rock, everything closes. Everything closes. And when he comes in the cleft of the rock, he takes a pen now. He writes it in the beginning. The word. Now, he writes the book of Genesis. Now all of a sudden he knows that there's Adam. He knows what happened with Adam. He knows how Adam created. Now Moses knows everything. He begins to write. Show me Lord. Your glory. I don't want to see anything from Adam. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. A teaching. So I want a teaching. The word that will not pass. I don't want knowledge that will pass. I want something that will not pass. I don't want to teach one day something that will disappear. So let generations and generations penetrate and be penetrated by it, meaning God coming them and them coming in God by knowing the truth. Listen to this. I love Jesus Christ. I love my master. I love my master. Come to Romans 2. I think we finished there because I believe this is extra much. No? Are we fine? Let's come to it. Romans. I love Jesus Christ. I love him so much. We come to Romans 2. No? Romans 2. Okay, I think we're finished here. I think we're finishing. We're done. We're done. We're done. This is just a matter of showing how. We're done. We end up here. After hearing this message, where will you trust that this comes from him? Where will you trust whether this will remain or not? In other words, I'm coming to how does immortality happen to us? Jesus dresses you in John 20 when you're old. 
He takes you by the hand. And he takes you where you do not want to go. But before he dresses you, how did you dress yourself? <laughs> Meaning, he dresses you, he dresses you on top of the way you dressed yourself. Depending on how you dressed yourself. So many, I know many have been commending, many have been asking, about how do we get this immortality? Can you pray for us so that we can receive it? But now, you get it. Depending on how you first dressed yourself before he could dress you. Then he can declare the kind of death that you will die. Meaning anything will come, you will stand, you will never be shaken. Anything will come, whatever they say, you will say no when they say yes. Anything will come, will never deny the Christ. Okay, all right. All right, somebody wants to know how now. Okay, before we go how, okay, read, read verse 7, and then if you understand, you can scream on top of what the way, on top of your voice. Because you can't scream under. It will be seasonal. I want you to make a joyful noise. Because it won't be seasonal. Joyful noise will be forever. Okay, seasonal. You pray. It's painful. There's no joyful noise. There's no thanksgiving because it's seasonal. How do you pray? It must always be filled with joy, with thanksgiving. Okay, are we ready? Read verse 7. Read verse 7. Read verse 7. You can use Amplified. Use Amplified verse 7. Read, read verse 7. We are finishing now. So, if one wants me to pray for immortality upon your life, I will teach you, dress yourself first. Read it. If you understand, you'll scream. Read it. To those who by patient persistence. Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you read loud today? To, to those who by patient persistence. To those who by patient persistence. Uh -huh. In well doing. In well doing. <laughs> In well doing, uh -huh. springing from piety, seek unseen. Can you can you repeat the apostle? To those who by patient persistence, uh -huh. in well doing, in well doing, springing from from piety, uh -huh. seek unseen, seek. But show glory and honor and the eternal blessedness of immortality. He will give eternal life. Can you repeat? Did you repeat? To those who by patient persistence in well doing. Those were patience, persistence. So, so if you dress yourself, you'll come. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Before I go on. John. 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 Chapter 9. He takes mud. Ah, are we ready, man? Come on. He takes mud. He puts it on his face, on his eyes. He says, go to the pool of Shulam. He washes himself. After that, he goes to the synagogue, to the church where he used to go. When he goes there, we don't know this man is a sinner. He dresses himself. You don't know him. Yet he dresses himself. He dresses himself. He, dresses himself. he puts on. They say to parents, can you, they say he's of age, he can speak. They go back, he dresses himself. You don't know him, yet he opens my eyes. You don't know him, he dresses himself. Well doing. 
Now, well doing. After they kick him out of the synagogue, he meets with Jesus. Who is he? He says, I'm here. Taking you by the hand, opening your eyes, blessing you, and taking you where you did not want to go. The kind of death that you're going to. Because you first dressed yourself, so after you meet with when he dresses you, no one can change your mind. No one can make you fall. No one can take you out of it. You are immortal. Ribra karoto siaka. Ribra kayoto. No, you, no one, anyone who comes say deny, stop what you're doing, you look at them in the eyes. You will never do that. You will never listen to anybody. You will never listen. You only hear the word from above. This is my son, whom I love. What do you say? Listen to him only. So nobody, you will never listen to anybody. You will never hear anybody. You will hear one God. We read, we continue on Friday. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he doesn't say, I pray for you to have immortal. He says, put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Put on immortality. So this is how we put it on. Listen. Go put it on. Go put it on. Listen. I'm using NLT here. NLT vision. NLT. Listen to this. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. So meaning that it's offered, you have to. So, so how, how did you offer mortality, immortality to the blind man? How did you offer immortality? He opens his eyes. Oh, how did you offer it? So, immortality, immortality is a basic, 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 basic. So, don't look at it as a tough thing to get. Praying for so many months, fasting for so many months. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. It's a basic thing. He opens his eyes for him to go back to his church. You go to one church, you get a miracle, you go back to your church. Somebody's busy on the pulpit talking against that. They took off what you put on. What are you going to do? Because the moment, the moment they say that, they say, no, I'm from there, I'm healed from there. You're putting on. You're putting on. You're dressing up. You're dressing up immortality. So many took it as a difficult teaching, a difficult thing to possess. No, how did Jesus start? He opens his eyes. He washes at the pool of children. He goes, anybody who says anything against the opening of his eyes, he will dress. It gives him a chance to dress, to put on. Can I repeat with NLT? Can I, who's got NLT there? Let me repeat there. With NLT. Ooh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Do we hear this? It's a basic thing. It's not difficult. The moment they tell you do this and you don't listen, you are undressed, you, do, you don't dress. And there are those who will undress you. For you to be reduced to the level of being under the sun, time for this, you are seasonal. There was a season for your eyes to be opened. When you are back there, you fail to function. Is it too much? Listen. A revelation of Christ will have specific people to honor you. Some it will be impossible for them to honor you. Because if they honor you, they have to close their varsity. Because you have already messed up millions and millions of people and they've graduated. 
So if they honor you, they will have a lot of people to do it with. Or to come and collect their school fees. Because there's a season. So, with immortality, you will qualify to expose seasonal things. This is Tuesday, by the way. Who said it's not formal? It's not like Sunday. One continuous day. Listen. Listen, I repeat. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good. He will give eternal life to those who keep... Meaning, you may say you are born again now, and yet you are lying to yourself. Because there's a trap of the synagogue. Listen, I repeat, he, give, he will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves. For themselves. There is everything under the sun. This is a miserable business that God gave men to busy himself. <laughs> it is a miserable business. It's a miserable business that God gave to men to busy himself. So when you busy yourself, what are you doing? You live for yourself. Who live for themselves? Who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness? There will be trouble and calamity for everyone. Let's leave it there. So John 9, we need to understand what is going John 9, after he was in the pool of Shiloh, he can see, he goes to his synagogue, where he gets the opportunity to dress himself, to put on immortality. So you, you, you don't say, I accept it. He opened my eyes, but... He's a sinner, as you say. Because they can't blind him again. So how, how do you dress it? Immortality is just a basic, basic thing. People, it's a basic. And you, un, you, 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 one great man of God, he went to glory. He was preaching about people criticized him. They never understood the basic thing. It's a basic thing. You don't want to be preaching knowledge that passes away. You don't want to speak tongues that, that will be ceased. You don't want to preach tongues that will be still. You don't want to come with prophecy which will cease. They will close the church. Where, where did it end up? Where did, you are going to fall. Where did it end up? Where did it end up? Where did it end up? Stop the mentality of the synagogue. Living under soup. Damn it. <laughs> it must not be seasonal. Listen, if you want to see that there's mortality, if you want to see that there's an unsuccessful persecution, you will see with when a gift is mortal, when it's operating under the sun. It's seasonal. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's not this. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. If you understand the parable I'm talking about, dress yourself. Many were told to renounce from the house synagogues to the synagogues, public synagogues. House synagogues and public synagogues. My father's house is not a public synagogue. It's a house of prayer.
First Corinthians 15. If you understand, you'll scream. We'll go on on Friday. But I want you to get this. First Corinthians 15. So you understand? So many undressed and many went naked. They couldn't even have a chance to dress anything. They went naked. You get deliverance now. You get healing now. You get healing now. When you go back, that's an opportunity for you to dress yourself, to put on. So, John 9, as easy as that. You go back. Nobody will stop you. You get healing, go back. But how do you come back? So when you come back, you must have dressed yourself. Hey! Because he met with him. He had to meet with him again. He opens his eyes with a miracle of saliva and the soil coming up with mud. He's not doing as he was doing it. Just laying hands. How can you heal people from grass? How can you heal people from drinking petrol? How can you? The Bible says lay hands. He did not do that. Here yeah, we're talking about now the things that no one can do on earth. So something in the atmosphere is introduced. When it's introduced, so that when you are healed, when you go back, there's already a challenge for you to give you an opportunity to dress. So John 9, he reveals it. That's why Jesus must check everything he was doing, whether healing, deliverance, he was teaching. He was teaching. It was not something that will be there and pass away. That's why we still read about them today. Listen. Are we ready? Are we ready? If you are ready, don't look into your Bible. Look at me. Peter comes at the gate beautiful. He didn't just say silver and gold I don't have none. Such as I have. He started by saying, look at me. Look at me. Because your eyes may be looking at my pockets. Your eyes may be looking at... Okay, 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 okay. Where did you get this? Look at me. So the apostle Paul says, whatever you have seen in me, or learn from me. Put it into practice. Now listen. <laughs> Look at me. Are you looking? Are you looking? Are you looking? I'm starting at verse 50. What I'm saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Listen. Look at me. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But are we ready? I just wanted you to carry that first. No? Now listen. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. I love this. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. Are we ready for the secret? But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die. But we will all be transformed. So many, some will die. But their transformation do not differ from our transformation. So the way we transform. Hey, 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 hey. So he first comes to our bodies, which will not inherit. But I'm still on the secret. Wait. Wait. We will not all die. But 
we would be changed the same. Also the body. How do we change? Listen, listen, listen. Listen. I repeat, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will be all, we'll all be transformed. Meaning some will die, but their transformation do, will not differ from our transformation. Listen. Listen. Are we ready? It will happen in a moment. In the blink of an eye. It doesn't take long this thing. You see? Okay. If you are blind, you can't blink. Blink if you are blind, you cannot blink. It will happen in a blink of... So, his, 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 his example was a blind man. His, his, to show that he has to... After he opens his physical eye, the man has to go and dress himself, blinking now. Blinking, it will happen. No, now, and what is happening? As he dresses himself, when they kick him out, it won't take long. He meets with him. He dresses him. Listen. I, I wanted to finish. In, I wanted to finish, but I, I, let's go on. It's never too late. If you are going to work tomorrow, it's seasonal. Get what remains forever. If you are going to school tomorrow, it's seasonal. Get what remains forever. Get what supersedes your profession. Listen now. Listen, it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. Now listen, for when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to life. And we, who are, you must check this, we who are living also be transformed. Now get the next sentence, if you understand your screen. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed in. You see, look, look, your body, it's a must. <laughs> okay. Use, use Amplified verse 53. I don't want to lose anybody. Re read that, verse 53. For this perishable part of us, this perishable, meaning part of us, perishable part of us, not those who died, they, they've transformed already, part of us. Uh -huh. For this perishable mm. part of us, mm must put on the imperishable. It says, must put on. Immortal. Must put, put, put on. Must put on. Uh -huh. For this perishable part of us must put on the imperishable mm -hmm. nature. Nature. The imperishable Repeat, repeat, read, flow, flow, apostle, flow. For this perishable part of us must put on imperishable nature. Must put on imperishable nature. If he gives you eternal life, he gives you imperishable nature. A man who's born again, he's like the wind. You don't know where he comes from. You don't. Imperishable nature. Um, Father, John 17, glorify me so that I can give them eternal life. What is eternal life? Eternal life means to know you. Listen. Go on. For this perishable part of us mm -hmm. must put on the imperishable nature. Yes. And this mortal part of us. This mortal part of us. This nature. This nature. That is capable of dying. That is capable of dying. Must put on immortality. Freedom from death. This man is a sinner. As we know Moses. You don't know him. You don't know him. I'm dressing. Hey, 
Yet he opened my eyes. You don't know him. Yet he opened my eyes. Listen to this. You don't know him yet. You see now. I remember there was a big camera looking at me saying, renounce. Tell the whole world that what you did is satanic, is not of God. I said, no. This, I was dressing up. This is completely the demonstration of the power of God. That's why, no, 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 I'm saying it. I had to dress myself. I had to dress myself. I have to refuse to meet with him. And I love one of my sons when he landed on the airport, when he says, no, he had to dress. He had to dress. So if they say stop, I say I continue, I dress. To meet with him, putting on immortality. I said, this is a demonstration of power. I will not deny my master. I will not deny the one who sent me. I'm not part of you who said he's a sinner. He's a satanist. No, he is not Beelzebub. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm still dressing. I just put on another coat now. I just put on another coat. So in the blink of an eye, so Jesus comes with John 9. He has to go to someone who's blind. Then Jesus reveals that revelation. I've come to blind those who claim to see. They will no longer blink. I've come to open the eyes of those who cannot see and to blind those who claim to be seen. I love Jesus Christ. He is a beautiful being. A beautiful one from above. He says it's a matter of must. We must put on. Now, do you want to hear the benefit? Verse 54, then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Now we're ready. Are we ready? For sin is the sting that results in death. So refuse sin, dress, put on. So death will come. Look, death will come. I'm ready. Immortality. Death comes and enters you. And there's no sin. Death, where's your sting? So death now has been swallowed up by immortality. Ah, by life. So, there's a thorn in my flesh. Father, can you remove it? My grace is sufficient. And now what is happening? That kind of harassment does not have sting in you. What kind of a body did he possess? Because that thorn, that thorn under his flesh was sent out to harass and buffet him. But where was the sting? So death was swallowed by life. So if you carry life, death can come in. But death is not aware that you are swallowing it. We swallowed petrol, we swallowed grass, we swallowed 
poisons we swallowed. Death has been swallowed up by life. Put on what? Sin is the sting of death. They say this man is a sinner. We know Moses will. Now he says, you don't know him, yet he opened my eyes. He's putting on. Death, sin could not prosper against him. Could not prosper against him. Could not prosper. So in other words, I'm teaching you, refuse what you know that is not of God. Put on, that's how you dress. Refuse. Refuse. Dress. You will meet with him. And when you meet with him, he dresses you. He takes you by the hand and takes you where you do not want to go. And he says, by that, he meant the kind of death that Peter would die. So it's not the death that other people would die. It's not the kind. You see, sin is the sting of death. Sin is the sting of death. And in every gift that operates there, there will be seizing. There will be pass away. There will be still. We heal the sick in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We prophesy. He said, I never knew you, you evildoers. There was sin. There was sin. Sin is the sting of death. I know if anyone has received offense because of this teaching, you definitely know the truth at the back of your mind. Not in your mind, at the back of your mind. You know the truth. Sin is the sting of death. So if you put on immortality, where's sin? In immortality, there's no sin. Ooh. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Now, that thing can come under your skin. The grace of God is sufficient for you because you put on. So, how did we see? When he boasted in 2 Corinthians 11, he was dressing. He was dressing. When they say this gospel, he's preaching it, he's dressing. When they say no to this, he says, Jesus is the Messiah. When they say, that's what put the Apostle Paul into a condition of giving an, in condition of having an opportunity to dress himself. So after dressing himself in chapter 11, he goes to chapter 12. He goes to chapter 12. Where God's strength is made perfect. Work, yes. It says sin is the sting of death. So in chapter 11, 2 Corinthians, he refuses. He goes through that. He gets beaten. He dresses. You think you are beating him. You think you are criticizing him. You think you are... He dresses. He dresses. And because now he is dressed, a thorn can come under his flesh. Because he, he put on immortality. Now what's happening? A thorn under his flesh can come. And when he comes in, because he dressed, he, his knowledge is that this is trouble. I mean, Lord, please remove it. Because now God comes with his knowledge. So that you can know. God permits you not to know everything. Ah. Now, what is happening? Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3, where we come from? So he planted eternity so that men must not know. So when man comes and says, I don't know, there's a thorn, remove it. He lets you know. My grace is sufficient. He lets you know. I don't know. My grace is sufficient. 
So you start delighting in it right now. You start delighting, hard pressed on every side. You're not, you del oh wow, I delight in this. Oh, it's working. It's a hard pressed on every, oh, what happened to my body, which was supposed to perish? What happened to my body? Ah, I drink poison. What happened to my body? I pick up snakes. What happened to my, death has been swallowed up by life. Death has been swallowed up by life. So the shadow of it, it's when Moses and Aaron came with their rod, it became a snake. And Pharaoh called five of them. They threw their rods. They became, but Moses and Aaron carried life. They carried death. So death was swallowed up by life. Life does not go according to the number. No matter how many you are, no matter how many you are, you can come in group. Life does not go according to the numbers. Mm -hmm. Many deserted dressing themselves. Put on. Can you use NIV there? Verse 53. It says, put on. Put on. You must put on. You must put on. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable must clothe itself not him clothing you please can you repeat can you repeat that i want us to get this it's a basic basic thing people it's a basic 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 thing which helps you to move away from operating under the sun or under the heaven. Who is this man? We don't know him. I'm dressing. I, you don't know him. So uh, the I speak. Renounce. Speak and say it is the devil. How can I say it is the devil? God spoke to me. God gave this to me. This is a total demonstration of power. It's not what you are saying. I had to dress. Can you imagine denying your Jesus while what you have done is known all over the world? What are you going to be before the world? How will you inherit the earth? Become meek so that you can inherit the earth. I will never, I will never, today the world knows that I will never. And when I come back to South Africa, the media try to come, they write, he said he will never leave it, he will continue. Yes, I continue. Even today. I dress. So that's how you see many. I believe many, especially who are saving God, you see where you made a mistake. Where you were told, stop that thing. You undressed yourself, not before God, but before men. Because when you dress yourself, it's when men, it's when men tells you to stop. So you undressed yourself before men. Someone who cannot even dress you. Is it too much? Am I too much? No, I'm just basic. I believe we got it now, no? Can you repeat verse 53 there? You put on, must dress himself. Re repeat it. For the perishable must clothe itself. Clothe itself. Clothe itself. It, the, it's, not, it's not when Jesus says, I take you by any, I dress you. I take you. No. Clothe yourself. How do you clothe yourself first? 
I thank God for my sons who never undressed themselves before men and denied. I mean, if you undress yourself, men, yourself before men, they know your nakedness. They know your nakedness. They can undermine you anytime because you are under them. Now you are under the heavens. I've never seen the Apostle Paul jumping like he's jumping out right now. I've never seen Maria Eta Udo jump. I've never seen oh, all the doctors are jumping. All the doctors of heaven, all the doctors from above. Beyond, meaning beyond the sun. Meaning beyond. Incorporate all the doctors beyond. Not under. Under the sun. That's what the same, the same King Solomon said. I busied myself with earthly wisdom. He said, I saw from under the sun. He busied himself. So never be in a ministry busying yourself. Never be saying I'm a leader of a certain church yet busying yourself. Put on. Wait, wait. Who must put the armor of God on you? Put on. Put on. Put on. So are you going to fast for him to bring the armor on you? Uh -uh. Put on. Put on. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God so that whatever comes will not prosper against you. So I declare, as you have received this message, you are no longer seasonal. You are no longer seasonal. I'm saying you are there to stay and finish your purpose without any interference. When you put on, you love only. There's no time to hate. <laughs> because God has planted eternity into your heart. So speak eternity. Speak life. Speak life and not death. I believe many understood it today. How can we argue with this? It will happen in the blink of an eye. So Jesus goes to the man who is blind to teach us this. That when he goes back to his synagogue, he maintained one thing, his dress code. He never took it off before men. He dressed. His parents undressed. I repeat, his parents undressed themselves. Because they had an opportunity there to say yes. Because it says, they asked the parents. The parents said, he is of age, he can speak for himself because they were afraid of the Jews. It means they knew the truth, they couldn't dress themselves with the truth. 
So the son alone dressed himself and left the synagogue, left his parents there. He left his parents there. I want to help you with the story of division now. I did not come for peace, but I came for division. He left his parents. That's why we say salvation is personal. Salvation is personal. He left his parents there. And when he went out, Jesus knowing what happened, Jesus knowing what happened, and he met with him. Who is he? I am he. I've come to blind those who claim to see and to open the eyes of those who cannot see. They became angry immediately. They were listening. It means when he left, maybe they followed. They became angry. But what can you do to a man who teaches such a message? Will you grab him? Will you push him? Will you bind him? Death has been swallowed up by life. Death has been swallowed up by life. So the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 kept on dressing and he boasted with the dressing in his weaknesses. That weak body. <laughs> and when it goes to chapter 12, God brings death under his skin. You can't plead when you know that what is under your skin is dangerous. Then God comes with knowledge. There's eternity planted in God. But I mean, God when plants eternity, so that man, so that man must not know. So when God comes, because Paul shows that he doesn't know, God gives him the knowledge. My grace is sufficient. Then he delights in it. Then God's strength. When God's strength, when God's strength is made perfect in your weaknesses, death cannot prosper. Death will not prosper. Death cannot prosper. So that's when we say Romans 8, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Don't call it that when you undress yourself before men. No weapon formed against me shall, that weapon comes and it prospers. Where's immortality now? Where's immortality? Where's immortality? And that's why I say, Sam, don't just rush and do it when you have not reached that stage. An immortal man can demonstrate it. And he can even use the mortals because the mortals are under his covering to protect them. Okay, somebody wants to argue it. Okay, the immortal can use water, oil, anything. They were going to perish. So that's where we say, that's where we say creation has been waiting for sons of glory to be manifested. So clothe yourself. Can you finish there? Let's finish and we minister now. You know, when, when it comes to such teaching, you wish you can just teach and people, let's close and go home. If you have pain, you are sick, you have received the best, better than your sickness. Okay. False testimony proves mortality. I repeat. False testimony. Testimony proves mortality. Sin is the sting of death. So, 
When you dress yourself with immortality, you can speak from your heart. What can mere mortal men do to me? Repeat verse 53. You don't dress, get dressed because Jesus dressed you. No. No. You dress yourself. In other words, I can teach you, but I cannot do it for you. Listen to it. I want us to repeat so that we can get it. Because many wanted impartation of such, but I want to teach you this. You must get it. A man who's immortal, when he sees that there's no sin, he can speak immortality and the person will be affected by his power. I repeat. Because there's no sin, because there's, a man who's immortal can come and say, receive such. You'll see power coming. You'll see a manifestation. You'll see its demonstration. Immortalities. West wizards. According to man. The belt that shuts us. The bells above. Because what they do is just not from under the heavens. It's from above. Set your mind on things that are from above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of the Father. Read there. Let's finish. For the perishable must clothe itself. Leave it there. The perishable must clothe itself. The perishable must clothe itself. The perishable cannot be clothed. It must clothe itself. Immortality. You see, that's why now we talk about the simple message, simple gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody makes it difficult and takes immortality as the last part. No, it's a basic thing. Clothe yourself. When they say stop, you say no, I believe. When they say stop doing it, no, it was given to me. How can I take it out when I didn't know how to put it in? I didn't know how to put it in. How can I take it out? So it was given to me. I don't know how to give it to me. So if I don't know how to give it to myself, how can I take it out? I don't know. So all I can do to take it out is to demonstrate it. Because the more you demonstrate it, it multiplies inside of you. What kind of power is this? Which power are you used to? I repeat. What kind of power is this? Which power are you used to? Which power are you used to? Which power do you know? God's majesty. God's mighty arm. It's not something that you can say you know. I love my God. I love him. I didn't know how he entered me. How can I take him out? He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. I can only teach you. And you are the one to dress yourself. And after dressing yourself, 
He will come and dress you and take you by the hand. The kind of death you die is not the death that other people are dying. Because after saying that to Peter, it says he was saying that to show the kind of death that Peter would die. Are you going to die the death that God knows? It means when he says he was saying that to show the kind of death that Peter, it means he knows the kind of death that Peter would die. Mm. Meaning there's some death that God does not know. That <laughs> I never knew you. You evil to us. So if I never knew you, the devil is responsible. It's not me. Painful and yet fulfilling. Have you ever heard that? Painful and yet fulfilling. The Lord is wonderful. And I've never seen the man of God who left teaching about immortality when people speak about him, criticizing him. I've never seen him so excited. He still loves his long hair. I've never seen him so excited. I, I just heard him saying that part. I couldn't say it. I thank you that you said it. It means you picked up. God is wonderful. Let's go for it. Come on, I'm get, let's go for it. And you see, that's where we find people. You can't teach about or telling people do not compromise. A lot of people, if we hate this teaching, a lot of people compromised. They couldn't put. Anyone who cannot dress himself, anyone who cannot dress himself, they're compromising. Anything you do, you're compromising. Because you're seasonal. When this one comes, yes. When this one comes, no. You're seasonal. That's compromising. That's compromising. You, you, you are seasonal. And you're one of the things under the heaven. You're one of the things under the heaven. Ooh. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Let's welcome our sister. What kind of power is this? Sometimes we preach, people can't stand. They just have to be flat down. Not walking like cows. Listen to this. God loves you. I want you to get this. I love Jesus Christ. I love Jesus Christ. I love Jesus Christ. Who's going to honor you? Some when they have to honor you, they're going to have to close their varsities. Because it has to cancel everything. I want you to hear this. You're going to be honored by God. going to be honored by God. I want you to get this. You know, we could get a lot of scriptures talking about this and a lot of them were ignored. A lot of them were ignored. <laughs> Dress ourselves. Put on. No one can put on the arm of God on your behalf. <laughs> Don't forget this. Sin is the sting of death. Sin is the sting of death. 
You will continue to go into trances. It will never stop. You'll be in a trance, trance after trance. If one trance has started, you will never stop. Because you are not your own. It is God now. You are not your own. You'll go into trances time and again. You'll see mysteries that deal with you, mysteries that deal with others, mysteries that shows that God is God in your life. You'll fall into many trances. And God will still going to correct a lot. And as I say, I know many fall into trances. Some of them are suffering. And as I taught today, as the Holy Spirit has revealed tonight, as the Holy Spirit has spoken tonight, you know and understand that you're truly suffering. Dress yourselves. Dress yourselves. I want us to hear this one trance, just one. We'll read other trances next time. Just one trance, just to help many. Just to help many. I want us to, to get this one trance, just to help many. Because this is life, meaning the above life has become the reality. Listen to this. The son tells the father everything. The son who does not tell the father everything, the sin. <laughs> Meaning that now, the son, when he tells the father everything, he's not going to function the way he wants to function, he will live by what comes from the mouth of the Father. He will only live by what comes from the mouth of God. It says, first delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. It means what you desired, forget about it. God gives the desires. So meaning, when you have given yourself to your father, your heart will only delight with everything that comes from the father, not from yourself. It says, first delight in the Lord, and he, listen to this, he shall give you the desires of your heart. So it means before you had desires, but God will come with something new. You are not going to be happy for what your father is not happy for. You are not going to accept what your father does not accept. Meaning, the son hands over everything to the father. The son lives only to love what the father loves. The son will live only to love what the father loves. Romans 9, I'll have mercy on whom I'll have mercy and compassion on whom I'll have compassion. The Apostle Paul in Philippians 4 verse 9, whatever you've seen in me or learned from me, put it into practice. Only that. So it means you cannot put any other thing into practice. <laughs> you put it into practice. Where have you seen it? Oh. Where have you seen it? So the heart of the son only delights in what the father loves. Then you can speak death. Where's your sting? I want us to hear this trance. 
We'll read many other trances there because there are lots of them. You will still fall into a trance without choice. I declare those trances. I declare those trances. As simple as I speak, it's just a basic thing to lead you to cause you to see. So I'm saying, in a blink of an eye, you begin to see another world. In a blink of an eye, you begin to see a different thing. And I declare that as it just started, it will not depend on whether you watch or you hear. The Lord has taken over. Just like the Apostle Paul when he was Saul. On the road to Damascus, he didn't have any other choice. He's not his own. Later he says, I was chosen before I was from deep Amazon, from before the world began. Now he confirms. He confirms everything. He's not his own. God loves you. I want us to hear the strength. Sin is the sting of death. I said it when lockdown started, that many quarantine where you have to quarantine. Go where it's right. But sin is the sting of death. When this happens now, it depends on what sting is in you. If you carry a sting in you, you cause death to come and prosper. So I would like many mouths or many lips to confess this. Death, where's your sting? Because there's righteousness. You put on immortality. Put on immortality. It doesn't say God will give you or dress you. You put yourself with immortality. And he will come. He will add on. He will dress you. He will dress you again. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. So after this message, what can a mere mortal man do to you? What can a mere mortal man do to you? I love you. Let's listen to this. That's why I'm saying many have said it when they, it's like God was showing me a lot that's going to happen. And we've heard with many confessions. Many decided to keep the sting. Sin, sin is the sting of death. Sin has become the sting of death. Tonight, I just wish we can just preach this. After this trance, we close. We go home. Because the only thing that you can minister yourself with is you dressing yourself. Because sometimes you minister to people. You, you, you minister healing. Listen, you minister healing, but you see a sting inside of a man. You minister deliverance, but you see a sting. You prophesy, but there's a sting. You see the sting of death there. And that's why one has to preach the message that sets one free without compromising. God loves you. I declare such life to all of you watching. I declare such life. And now, after the immortality, you're going to do crazy things. Oh, immortal Jesus. men. Let me teach you. If you want to know about immortal men, you'll be shocked. Nicodemus saw an immortal man. And he said, we know that you're from God. For no one can do the things that you do. There was no mortal healing from Jesus. There was no knowledge that passes away. There was no mortal deliverance. There was no mortal, mortal tongues when he has spoken. 
he would not be judged based on what he said. It's impossible. Meaning, we'll teach about these things next time. Meaning, you cannot teach and later you are judged on what you said. Because what you taught is the one that judges. Because he, he is the one who became the weight that has become flesh. We'll, we'll, we'll teach about these things. You know. Immortality. We'll know more. Let's hear this trans. Sin is the sting of death. Let's read there. Many are not teaching and not tran trances anymore. Never neglect what God is doing. We teach about them. So that what the church lost can be restored. Let's go. Thank you, Father. This trance was experienced by Apostle Samuel this morning. And it reads as follows. Greetings, my King and my Lord, Papa Lesoro Daniel, and the disciples of the house and the Rabbonites all over the world. My name is Apostle Samuel Thunder from Zanin in Hakapani in Limpopo. By the grace of God, it was on the 20th of October 2020, on Tuesday morning, when I was in a trance. I saw an angel of the Lord in the form of a man caught up. He was holding a loudspeaker, shouting, the time has come for the Lord God Almighty to mark his own children. The Lord knows who are his. While he was busy shouting like that, blowing a trumpet, I saw many people, different languages and cultures, appeared before him. He called many and he started choosing. Those whom he chose, he marked them on their forehead with a star. But to my surprise, it was only few of those who were marked. And I saw many pastors, prophets, apostles, bishops, and many Christians left behind. So, many churches full of people, but empty of the glory of God. I saw also many sons of the house left outside. I said, my Lord. Can you go back there? Go back, repeat. Someone thinks that good one, repeat. There's no need to teach about this because we just taught the message. Go, go back again. Go back. He called many and he started choosing. Those whom he chose, he marked them on their forehead with a star. But to my surprise, it was only few of those who were marked. And I saw many pastors, prophets, apostles, bishops, and many Christians left behind. It's scary, eh? It's scary. Let's think of ourselves now. <gasps> this does not need for you to hear <laughs> and discuss with someone. <laughs> it's an interview. Can you start where it starts? Can you start where it starts? <laughs> Greetings, my king and my lord, Papa Lesro Daniel and the disciples of the house and the Rabbonites all over the world. My name is Apostle Samuel Thunder from Zanin in Hakapani in Limpopo. By the grace of God, it was on the 20th of October 2020, on Tuesday morning, when I was in a trance. I saw an angel of the Lord in the form of a man caught up. He was holding a loudspeaker shouting, 